but today's question was probably the most popular question. This was the one that we got more of out of the 40 questions that we got brought in. This was the one that was repeated more than any of them. Why does God allow bad things to happen to good people? And it's a valid question. In fact, it's one of the ones that really drives most people from either, all right, I'm going to commit to this Christianity thing, or I'm just going to walk away from it, because this is a hard question to grasp and to grip with. So turn with me, get your notes out, get your Bibles out. Let's dig in the, into this together. And just like all the other previous weeks, I went out and I interviewed a lot of people in our community asking them this exact same question. So let's see what they have to say. What do you guys think? Why do you think bad things happen to good people? Uh, I guess it's probably more of a test, right? Um, to see if you can bounce back and if you'll continue to, I guess, believe in a higher power. Wow, it's a good one. You got me on that one. All right. God doesn't just rain on the unjust, he rains on the just as well. For God to show his true self to you. The Lord gives and the Lord taketh away. Blessed be the name of the Lord. So you have a testimony. I mean, he has to let things happen because, I mean, it can't always be perfect. You know what I mean? So do you think that God allows bad things to happen? Or do you think that he is the creator of those bad things? Man, you, you get me on all these good questions here, and I'm not, I mean, I believe in God. Don't get it messed up, but I don't, I'm, I don't read the Bible much, you know what I'm saying? So, you know, we, we live in this world that's fallen because of our forefather Adam's sin in the garden. I don't think it's God that's doing it. There's an enemy out there called the devil, and I think that's what's happening. Um, probably a little bit of both, depending on your situation. I believe that he allows us to go through life experiences. God allows for struggles to come upon those who he loves. So the bad thing to turn around for God, good thing. Everything that you go through prepares you for the next level in your life that he has set for you. Because all things work for the good for those who believe in God. So you got to first believe in God. And once you believe in him and have faith in him, he'll do things that you uh, how do you say that word? Beyond your imagination. Why do you think God allows the enemy to, to do that to us? You may be involved in teaching of somebody else, or it may be orchestrated towards you. Those life experiences are tests mm -hmm. to see whether we're going to remain steadfast in the faith or we're going to waver. If anything, in terms of being a Christian, we should expect suffering. And, and I think that this is the testing period to try to get the lost souls saved into the kingdom of God. So when God brings you to certain things, that, like he delivered me from drugs, alcohol, and also he'll put you in places where he delivered you from so you can help deliver somebody else. So a lot of different opinions out there about why God allows things to happen, especially to good people. And, uh, you know, when you think about, you know, is it about other people? Is it about ourselves? Is it about just what God wants? Is it about the circumstances we set ourselves in or the circumstances that we walk through where God put us? There's all kinds of different things to navigate through when it comes to this idea and this question. You know, uh, Rabbi Harold Kushner said this, and I think it's a really good starting point for us here. He says, it becomes, uh, becomes much easier to take God seriously as a source of moral values. And again, what I mentioned, right, a lot of times this question keeps people from going from here where I'm thinking about God, I'm thinking about Christianity, all the way over to here where I'm full in. And it makes it easier to, to think, to take God seriously and to go after him if we don't hold him responsible for all the unfair things that happens in this world. All right? And that's the idea. Is this, that's the question that really kind of gets to the bottom of this is who's responsible? Right? Who's responsible for the bad things? 
And when we look at God, and we, especially as Christians, when we tell the world around us that who God is and how great he is and how amazing he is and how in control he is, then they automatically come down, well, if he's so good, if he's so loving, if he's so in control, then why? Right? Because isn't he responsible for it then? And that's its responsibility is really what comes down to this. And what I want us to understand first and foremost when it comes to this topic, when this, this idea of uh, um, bad things happening to people, to good people, is number one, God is sovereign, all right, and we are human. God is sovereign and we are human. What does that mean? Well, it's this idea that God is in control, right? He is there, He is in control. And we don't always understand the things that are happening around us. And we may never understand those things. There's a lot of times where, where things are a little bit different. We can't comprehend. We can't grasp the big picture. But what we can be sure of is God is in control. God is in So he is sovereign. He is in control. And my humanity does not allow me to see all of the things in the big picture that God does see. We also know God is finite, right? I Meaning he, he is the finisher. He is the creator. He is the one that the omega and the, uh, uh, the alpha and the omega. He is always there. And we have flaws. We have flaws. We're broken. We're messed up. We don't know everything. God is, he's just and we're, you know, we are without excuse. So this idea of, of understanding who God is and then the fact that we are human puts us on this starting point where when it comes to answering this really hard question, I may not have the answer for every single circumstance that I find myself in, but I know that God is still sovereign. I know that he is still in control. I know that no matter what's happening right now, he is still above where it is I find myself in. And this is a hard thing to go into the Christianity walk, hard thing to follow God with when it comes to the fact that we don't have an answer, but we trust in God even when it's really, really hard. And that's called faith. Hebrews 11, 1, faith shows the reality of what we hope for, right, what we want, and it is evidence of things we cannot see, we cannot grasp, we cannot get our heads around. We don't know the why. We can't get to that because we are human, yet God is still sovereign. So we hope in something, we hope in him, even though we can't see it. Because that's what we want, right? We want to be able to like touch it. We don't want it to be tangible. We want to be able to give the answer and be 100% sure of it. And when you understand I'm human, I'm messed up, I cannot have that, then you immediately start stepping in the right direction to, to, to the reality. You might not know, and that's okay. That's okay, because he is sovereign. Proverbs 3, 5 says, trust in the Lord with all your heart and do not depend on your own what? Understanding. Trusting in God even when you don't understand it. That's what faith is. And that's what he's asking us to do, even in the heart. It's easy to do that when things are going good. When everything's lined up in a pretty row, when there's no weeds, when there's, there's no clouds, there's no you know, unhappy feelings or emotions, it's easy to trust God then. But when things get hard, when something bad happens, that's where the faith comes in. We trust in God even though I don't understand it. Why? Because he's sovereign and I'm human. He's perfect, and I'm flawed. He knows it all, and I don't have a clue most of the time. But I trust in him, even when I don't understand it. So God is sovereign, and that, that drives us. Right? He's always with us. He's always telling us to trust him because he has these things under control. So God is sovereign, and we are human. Number two, the bad circumstances of this world, right? the bad things that happen, are not the end. The bad things that happen in this world are not the end all. It's not going to stop here. And a lot of times when we find ourselves in a bad circumstance or in a bad situation, we feel like it's world ending. Like this is where I'm going to live forever now. This is how life is going to be moving forward. And nothing's ever going to change because we have that weight on our shoulders. We have that pain that we're dealing with. The pain is hard. Pain is uncomfortable. 
And yet he asks us to trust him because he is still in control. And when we understand that this isn't the end all, like where I find myself in this hard time right now, this isn't where it's all going to stop. That one day, no matter what, it's going to be better. As a pastor, this is the thing that I just, I have to rely on and go after when it comes to, you know, talking about, talking to people about illnesses, cancer, and things like that. Because what do they want? Someone comes up to you and says, you know, hey, PM, pray over me. I want my cancer healed. What do you say to that? You know what I can say to it? No matter what happens, if you trust in Jesus, you will absolutely be 100% healed someday. But I don't know if it's going to be here on earth. But I promise you, when you leave here, to go to heaven one day, because you know Christ is your Savior, you will be healed 100%. So it doesn't end here. And we don't have to sit here. And we don't have to, 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 to grind ourselves in this moment and say that nothing's ever going to get any better. The circumstances that you find yourself in right now, they might feel like the end, but 2 Corinthians four sixteen to 18 says, that is why we never give up. Though our bodies are dying, our spirits are being renewed every day, for our present troubles are small and won't last very long, yet they produce for us a glory that vastly outweighs them and will last forever. Meaning it's not about the now. It's about the future. They're going to last forever, the blessings that are going to come. So we don't look at the troubles we we can see now. Rather, we fix our gaze on the things that we cannot that cannot be seen. Didn't we just read about that stuff that can't be seen? What is that? It's called faith. The things that I cannot see. So I'm gazing on the things that I cannot, that cannot be seen for the things we see now will soon be gone, but the things we cannot see will last forever. So we can have that hope moving forward because we can sit here in the now, even though it's hard to know that this isn't where it ends for me. It's going to get better someday. And this is biblical hope. And it's hope that anybody can have. Every single person, no matter the circumstance you find yourself in, you can have real hope of what's to come. And sometimes that's the best thing you can ask for in this life right now. What's to come? What's to come after this? You know, we look at the future, right, and we don't rest in the now. Look to the future. Don't rest in this this pain. You got to deal with it. You can't ignore it. But don't let it keep you from going where it is that God wants you to go. All right, the circumstances are not where this thing is going to end. Number three, because God can work bad things into blessings for us. He can work bad things into blessings for each and every one of us. You know, this is sometimes that one thing that makes us, you know, especially if you're on the receiving end of that statement, like you're going through a hard time, you walk up to somebody, you're like, man, things are hard right now. And what do they say to you? Oh, God's got his reasons. What do you want to do? Punch him right in the nose. It's true. This is the one thing right here where we don't want to hear this. We don't want to listen to this. We just want we just want you to just be quiet because I am hurting right now and I don't need to hear that it's happening for a reason. I get that. And I'm not going to come up to you and say that. But what I the reason why I put it in here that I want us to grab it is cuz I want you to remember it. So that when, when you're going through it, Nobody has to say it to you. You're living by it. It's true to you already. And so maybe if they do say it, you don't want to punch them in the nose anymore because you agree with them. Because you know it's true, even though it's really hard. There could be a blessing. There is, I shouldn't say it could be, there will be a blessing that will come out of that. Now what we want to hear, and and, and what we actually need to put into our hearts and our minds are, are two completely different things especially when it comes to the bad. I mean, look at Joseph. Look at the son of Jacob, Joseph, and, and how his bad circumstances, right, being 
thrown into the pit by his brother, sold into slavery. The ups and downs of Joseph's life were, were, were amazing. Genesis 50, 19 through 21 comes near the end of this, and this is what he said. You know, his brothers come before him, knowing what they did to him years before, and they're like, oh, no, he's going to want revenge. He's going to want to kill, kill us. What are we going to do? And he says to them, don't be afraid of me. Am I God that I can punish you? 20, you intended to harm me, but God intended it all for good. He brought me to this position so I could save the lives of many people. No, don't be afraid. I will continue to take care of you and your children. So he reassured them by speaking kindly to them. See, he understood that even in the pain, one, it wasn't going to end there, and that God was going to use him, and a massive blessing came out of the pain and the circumstances that Joseph found, him in, found himself in. And it's interesting with the story of Joseph, too. It wasn't things that Joseph put himself into. He didn't jump into the pit. He was thrown into the pit. Sometimes we get thrown into these circumstances. Sometimes we jump. Sometimes we do things in our lives where we put ourselves in the pit. But God wants to use these bad things, and he wants to turn them around, and he wants to bless us afterwards through them, just like he did with Joseph here. So I know it's hard, I know it hurts, and I know that you can't possibly see any good coming out of where you sit right now. And you're saying, I'm not a bad person, why is this happening to me? Listen, God can use this as a blessing for you. He can put this into your life in a way that you never saw coming, because that's who God is. That's how amazing he is. We also, not only can we uh, work through the bad things, or God will work through the bad things for blessings, but also, number four, God can work the bad things into blessings for others as well, not only for us, but also for others. We heard a couple of those testimonies that people were to say, you know, maybe God's trying to do something through me for someone else. Man, isn't it fun to be a tool? A tool for Jesus? Not usually. Especially if you're the nail. And that's the thing. Like, we walk through life, and we're, like, so focused in on ourselves. And then something bad happens, and very rarely do we think, sit there and go, man, I can't wait to somebody, see whatever that other blessing somebody else is getting out of this on my behalf. That's hard because we're selfish. We're thinking of ourselves. But yet he wants to use that pain that's in our lives to bless others and to, to lead and to heal others. We heard that in there too. Maybe what you're going through right now, he's going to use to later heal somebody else. You're like, I don't want that. I want to be healed. You will be. You will be. But you have to go through this because God has a purpose and a plan for your life. He's never going to waste any experience that you are willing to give to him. I, I, I love the, the, the picture of, you know, if you look at your life and you're standing in the hallway. I've talked about this before. You know, you're standing in this hallway and you're looking all the way down this hallway. And this is your life. And on the walls are all these paintings. And every painting is an experience that you went through. Some are big. Some are small. Some are bright. Some are black and white. Some have, you know, you want everybody to see, others you want to put a cover over. But every single one of those experiences, if you give them to God, he can use them to change somebody's life. And when they're looking at your picture, when they're looking at your life, and they see what it is that God brought you through, how he used you, then their lives can be changed and transformed. Which is a privilege. That's a painful one, but it's a privilege. This is Becca and I's biggest testimony when it comes to our lives. The loss of all of our babies. Because we didn't want to lose those children. We didn't want to have a miscarriage and then another. And then we get our miracle. And then we have another and another and another and another. And we're going, God, why? We're good people. I'm a pastor. My wife's a missionary kid. We love you. We're serving you. Why? One, I'm going to heal you. You know how I'm going to heal you? I'm going to give you a house full of kids. 
that you didn't bring into this world, but I did. And two, you're going to walk alongside people that have the same pain you're feeling right now. So I need you to feel it. I need you to feel it. I need you to trust in me, but I need you to feel it. So that way when they're going through it, you can come up right next to them and say in truth, I get it. It's hard. It hurts. But you're going to be okay. And then duck because you're going to get punched in the nose. We don't like to think that God has to use us to help others because, man, God, I need so much help right now. 2 Corinthians 1, 3 through 5. All praise to God. The Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. God is our merciful Father and the source of all comfort. The source of all comfort. Do you know when do you need comfort in your life? It's not when things are going good. You're already comfortable. It's when things are going bad. That's when you need that comfort. And he's the source of that. He comforts us in all our troubles so, with a reason so, that we can comfort others when they are troubled. We will be able to give them the same comfort God has given to us. For the, for the more we suffer for Christ, the more God will shower us with his comfort through Christ. When we give our lives back to Christ, when we do that, when we have that desire, and that's what it is. Listen, when you, when you give your life to Christ, you should have a desire your, your, to, to, to give back your life to him to use as he sees fit. And that's hard. But we, we forget that too often, right? Because what, what are we concerned about? Not going to hell. I don't want to end up there because that would be really bad. And we forget that when we enter into a relationship with Jesus Christ, we are giving our lives back to him to use because he gave his life for us to start. And now we give it back to him to use as he will. And, and, and in the bad, in the pain, we forget about that part of the, the promise that we made, the vow that we made, the connection that we made, the relationship that we have. Don't forget that. Don't forget that God wants to use you to help others. And you should desire to be used by God. Now, we might have a different idea of what that might look like in our lives, right? Yeah, God, use me in Hawaii. (laughs) No, Mike. Parkersburg, Pennsylvania. I'm just kidding. I love it here. The point is that we don't know what God's going to do, but we are okay with that because he is sovereign and because I am human and because he can take a bad and turn it into a blessing, not only for me, but for others around me as well. And that's good. That's really good. Back page your notes. You know, I talked about how we don't understand, right? But when we can rely on God being sovereign, we have that faith. And we also understand, like Kushner said, that God is not responsible. Those things help us. But, number five, God also understands the pain of the innocent. He understands the pain of the innocent. And this, this, this right here is more of, uh, it's more of a point to drive us to the fact that when we're, because it comes back to the why, right? Like, if God is so good, then why would he allow this to happen? The other points that we had in here kind of help motivate us to continue through when it's really hard, but it still doesn't really answer the question as to the why. Well, this, this helps with that because when we can understand the person of God, understand his heart towards people, again, we, we come back to the faith, we come back to the sovereignty, and we come back to the realization that he's not responsible for all the bad things that are happening in this world. We can then see that because, he, because of the heart that he has and how much he loves us, We can continue to trust him. The why. All right. God understands the pain of the innocent. All right. Probably, and not probably, more than anyone does he understand the pain of the innocent. For a lot of reasons. One, he created us, we are his children. Two, he knows the pain deeper than even we do or anyone else around us. And he doesn't want to see his children in pain. That, 
that, that, that he hates that. And third, he actually sent his son to endure that pain for us. You can see how God understands and loves the innocent. He desires for us to, to, to find ourselves within this relationship with him, not because he's forcing us to be there, but because he actually understands why we should be there too. He understands that pain even more than we do. He understands the, the pain of the innocent even more than we do. 1 Peter 2, 20-23 2, says, Of course, you get no credit for being patient if you're beaten for doing wrong. That's like an ouch statement. Like, ugh, that stings a little bit, right? But if you suffer for doing good and endure it patiently, God is pleased with you. For God called you to do good even if it means suffering just as Christ suffered for you. He is your example, and you must follow in his steps. He never sinned nor ever deceived anyone. He did not retaliate when he was insulted nor threatened revenge when he suffered. He left his case in the hands of God, who always judges fairly. He let circle that. He left his case in the hands of God. Friend, leave your circumstance in the hands of God. And allow him to move, allow him to work, allow him to do something. He is just, and he will do the right with it. It's, it's, um, it is by coincidence on my end, not on God's, that we go through this message right here in the midst of a movie that's out right now that I'm sure many of you guys have seen, Sound of Freedom. And if you haven't seen it, I would encourage you to but it talks about this idea, the bad circumstance, the bad situation uh, that is happening in this world, specifically around the topic of human trafficking. And the movie focuses mostly on children and human trafficking. And you sit there and you're like, I went and saw it and I'm sitting there and it's, you leave with one of two emotional responses. You're either sad or you're angry. I had two young ladies sitting in front of me, the row ahead of me. They were the sad ones, very loudly sad. I was the angry one. And you sit there, and you were watching it, and you're looking, God, they're innocent. They're innocent. How could you allow this? What are you thinking? How are you not involved here? And then you look at this, Matthew 18, 6. But if you cause one of these little ones who trusts in me to fall into sin, it would be better for you to have a large millstone tied around your neck and be drowned in the depths of the sea. That's how he feels about this. That's how he feels. He sent his son to die for us. A cruel death. And although I cannot in my humanity, understand why this is happening to these people, these innocents. I know God is sovereign. And I know that the pain you find yourself in right now is not the end. And I know that he loves you more than anything in this world. Why? Because he says it. He goes, don't hurt my children. Might as well just tie a big rock around your neck and go jump into the sea. That's better for you than what I'm going to do, because I am just. We, I don't have the answer as to the why, but I do have the answer as to who and how much he loves us. And in my humanity, I trust in faith in God's sovereignty that when a bad thing happens to what we consider to be a good person, an innocent person, ourselves, he's still in control. And I can still trust him. Here's these verses again, Proverbs 3, 5 and 6. Trust in the Lord. Trust in the Lord with all your heart everything you have. Do not depend on your own understanding. Why? Because I'm human and I don't understand it all. I'm not even a really a smart human. I'm one of the average, below average guys. I don't understand. 
but seek his will in all that you do, especially in the pain. And he will show you which path to take. He's going to show you. He's going to lead you because he loves you and he cares and he knows it so much deeper than you do, so much deeper than I do. So here's your challenge. What pain in your past do you need to release to God so he can begin to move you toward that healing and that blessing? Because when he does heal you, he's going to bless you. And honestly, sometimes that healing is the blessing. Because your eyes are now opened and you can move into a place in that next pa- place of pain. And listen, there's probably going to be another one. You can now get through it a little bit better, a little bit easier because you've been through the past. You've been, or maybe he's setting you up because you're about to help somebody else. You're about to come alongside someone that needs that healing, that love. And you can be that tool that God's going to use to show them. Isaiah 59, 2 says it's your sins that have cut you off from God. Your sins have cut you off from God. You know, in today's message, it really talks more to this idea of if, if, if my sins, if I'm cut off from God, then I'm, I'm unable to see the why or see the, 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 the hope that's ahead past this pain. And I want to because I need to get through this. So you've got to deal with this sin in your life so you can connect with the healer, so you can be a part of the solution that he has for you. Romans 3, 23, for everyone in sin, we all fall short of God's glorious standard. So we all have the sin thing. We all have to deal with this, and we all have pain. Every single one of us has pain that we've been through in our lives. The wages of that sin is death, Romans 6, 23. But the free gift of God is eternal life through Christ Jesus, our Lord. Life. Don't raise your hand, but if you're sitting in pain right now, Maybe the worst pain you've ever had in your life. Can you picture life? Like a happy life? Fulfilled life? A promised life? A lot of us would probably say no, because it just hurts so much right here. But he says, I want you to have this. I want you to have this gift that you can keep going forward even when it's hard, knowing that if it doesn't heal the way you want it to hear, that one day you will be 100% healed in the presence of Jesus. In Romans 10, if you openly declare that Jesus is Lord and believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, you will be saved. You can have that hope even when it's really hard. Even when it hurts a lot. I want to pray with you guys. And then I'm going to get off the stage. We're going to show you this quick video here in a moment. It kind of, it does a really great job of summarizing the messy with God involved. But my challenge before we watch that is do you have God involved yet? Have you involved him in your life? Have you made him the king of your life? Have you made him the leader? Have you, have you decided that you're going to follow him no matter the circumstance, no matter the pain, no matter the distance? Because anything I talk about and anything that you're going to see or for the weeks and months and years to come, none of it is going to give you an answer if you don't have God and you need him. So Lord, we come before you And we ask that in this moment right now, we would calm our hearts and our minds. We would focus in on who you are. Lord, we would ask the question, do we really know who you are? Are we we going after you? Are you just something else that we're thinking about and we haven't really applied the knowledge of who you are and and what you can do and, and what you mean to us and what we mean to you? And help us right now, Lord to humble and quiet our hearts before you, to invite you into this moment. And Lord, I pray that if there is anyone listening to my voice today, anyone that is hearing your truth today, I pray that they would invite you in. And friend, if you want to do that, if you want to make Jesus Christ the Lord of your life, the Savior of your life, the hope of your future, I want to lead you in a prayer right now. 
between you and God, where you sit, where you listen. Say something like this. Jesus, I know I'm a sinner, and I know that sin separates me from God. And right now, I want to ask you to come into my heart today, to come into my life today, to save me today. Because I can't go through this life anymore without you. I believe that you love me so much that you died on the cross for me. I believe that God loved me so much that he rose, that he raised Jesus from the dead. I believe that you want a relationship with me and God, I want a relationship with you. So Jesus, come into my heart today. I'll follow you from this day forward. Lead me. Lord, we love you, we praise you, we thank you. You are amazing God. We give our hope and our future to you. We do it all because of your son, Jesus Christ. And in his name.